Ariel, if I could marry her brain, it would be amazing. If you need anything technical. She is down to earth. She's fun. She's very easy to network with. Anything systems oriented. Just anything web dev techie that I don't understand, Ariel has swooped in and fixed. And she's my accountability bulldog. She is a queen. Anything infrastructure related. She is helpful and she helps guide and answer all your questions that you have about growing your business and networking and getting started. She gives me life. I mean, she just gives me life. Ariel Raynal is your girl. Welcome to the Truck Tech Podcast with your host, Ariel Raynal. I just want to marry her brain. She's a genius. Hey, Ariel, what's up? Hey. <laughs> <laughs> I figured I'd start things a little differently this time. I'm excited. I'm excited. Yay. So on this episode, we're talking about sales calls, right? Yeah, yeah. I, uh, I, I'm having a good time. Okay, so what I did was I ran into some struggles with bills, okay? Mm-hmm. surprise surprise uh, no this this kind of thing happens um i overinvested. i took on a team member and then bought a couple of softwares and um miscalculated we'll say okay mm-hmm. so i needed to drum up some sales and fast and i was desperate and i was worried and i was bothered and it didn't happen changed my energy a bit and all of a sudden people started hitting up my inbox. So that's a talk for another day if we haven't already had it. <laughs> we have it. That is a good talk. But I think that the the interesting thing that happened was that my marketing funnel had gone to work. And we talked about that last, you know, on the last episode. My marketing funnel had done its job. And all of a sudden, a lady who had been following me for a year reached out into my inbox and said, okay, I'd like to schedule a sales call. I already know what you do. I already know, you know, the ballpark of what you charge. I just need the work. So that was easy. Then a friend of mine dropped my name into, well, I I say a friend of mine, he's a client of mine. He dropped my name into a group of like a bunch of speakers, like 400 speakers. Uh And one of them reached out. There you go. You referred someone to me Mm -hmm. as well. You dropped my name in someone's hat and they reached out. So my referral sources are good. And uh, we did a live And on that live, we were talking, like I said, in the last episode about what makes a good host and who we want to work with. And someone reached out off of that. So I've been setting up sales calls now. And I want to talk about this part because this is the part that terrifies people. (laughs) I was about to say, you know, people hear this and they're like, oh my gosh, no, I can't handle it. I'm getting anxiety. Ugh. I can't do it. Just all kinds of gremlins and limiting beliefs and everything comes up. Yeah. Let me mention the word sales. Yeah. And so like, call it what you want to. It's a friendly phone call where I tell someone what I do. They tell me what they need. And at the end, they give me money. Like, what what do you... Take the word sales out of it and put like, it, it's, it's a knitting call. Like say what you want to, <laughs> make it feel warm and cozy. I don't mind, but. We're going to chit chat. Yeah, Let's we're going to have a chat. So like I call them production meetings. Oh. Where I get on the phone and I talk to you about your production needs. And then I tell you at the end what the cost is. I love that. So it literally like, and my, like my potential clients get a message saying that they're scheduled to a production meeting with me. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't even feel like a sales call to them. Right. And it sounds like a higher echelon of call. It's an assumption that you already are working with me. Right. Because to have a meeting, that means you're already on the team or a part of something. To be having a production meeting right from call one. Do you know how important that makes people feel? (laughs) Wow. <laughs> so it beats the shit out of a discovery call, let me tell you. Yeah. So like but that's overused now too. Damn right it is. <laughs> Zig when people zag. But what <laughs> uh, that's overused too now, by the way. <laughs> oh, I hadn't heard that one. <laughs> so one of the things that I do is I, I schedule up a production meeting and and most of the time, like if your marketing funnel is working well, you're getting requests from like Facebook Messenger or you're getting requests in on your pages inbox or you're getting requests in Twitter or you're getting requests via email, you know, or people are, if you're even more fancy, 
you know, they're automated and they're booking in through like a calendar software. Either way, you're getting the requests. But I once had a coach tell me that the money is made on the phone. Mm -hmm. No matter how many steps you have in your sales process, your money will be made with a point of contact, typically over the phone. Even better than video, even better than written is the phone. Yeah. So I always get people on a Zoom call just like you and I are doing right now. So I schedule their production meeting. We get on a call like this. And the first thing I do is ask them, hey, well, it, sometimes people like to chit chat. And I'm not going to lie, Ariel, like you know me. <laughs> that's the part that scares me. It's and I not, love it. It's not the sales conversation that scares me. It's not saying the price that scares me. It's like, oh, my God, what if they ask me about my life? <laughs> <laughs> ask them about theirs and listen yeah, yeah I'd be like yeah so um I'm Scott I grew up here what do you do you know right. like I'm bad at that so that part scares me yes and that holds me used to hold me back from getting on calls okay then I realized that usually people only want to talk about either themselves or my child mm -hmm. Scotland yeah that's easy I could talk about other people all day so it's not weird to me, right? So like we get past that part and I go, okay, so tell me what you need. What do, what do you need us to do for you? And then they kind of map it out for me. And sometimes it's crystal clear. They're like, I need show notes and I need production and I need editing and I need to touch none of it. And what if they don't know? Well, then they call me and they're like, I don't really know what I need, but here's my vision. Got it. And they explain it to me. And I sit there and I intently listen, knowing full well we can do all of this no problem, but I let them finish mm -hmm. because I'm not rude. <laughs> By the way, <laughs> don't fucking cut people off in your sales calls. Don't be an asshole, okay? Let them finish. Right, right. So you let them finish and they map out their whole vision of what they want because right now they're building a dream in front of you. Mm -hmm. And that listen, dream. Listen, listen, listen. Yeah, and that dream has all of the pieces you need, but it's also telling you what's going to be expected of you. It's telling you where you can refer other people who have skills you don't have. Like when people are talking, they're giving a lot of information away, right? Mm -hmm. So then you, you know, once they build the dream, I say, okay, here are the parts I can help you with. Yeah. Or I say, okay, we can definitely do everything you're asking for. Here's kind of how it works. I give them a broad brush overview of what we do. You know, we handle your editing. We do your intro and outro. We do your production. So Editing means ums, ahs, clicks, pops, background noise, all that stuff. Production is volumes, hums and buzzes in the background. If we need to do noise reduction or anything like that to make everything sound as great as we possibly can so that your listeners love it, we then write your show notes, SEO optimized so that people can find you. And then we upload it, schedule it for you, and then you promote it the day it comes out. Mm-hmm. By that point, because I've been able to tell people, this is everything we do for you. And here's the impact it'll have. Your listeners will love you. You're, you know, like that kind of thing. People Take are like, okay, money. well, how much does all of this cost? And then I say my price, all of this will be X, Y, Z per month. And then you shut up. And then you shut the hell up. <laughs> do not say a <laughs> word. And they're going to do Don't try that. to justify or anything. Just shut up. That is the hardest thing for people to do. I have literally seen Ariel take someone with money in their pocket and turn it into a free client in that exact moment. And I know I've seen her do it because I have done it too. Mm -hmm. And I got over doing it. And then now when I see other people do it, I cry a tear every time. Mm -hmm. Because at that point, you're assuming, oh, they can't afford it. They're not saying anything yet. Oh, well, I, you, know, you know what? I'm looking at this now and I could give you half. No. Yeah. None yeah. of that. And you None end up resenting that, that client. And it's your fault, <laughs> not theirs, because <laughs> you trained them to be able to take advantage of you. So what you do is you, you say your price and you stop and you let them ponder it and they may come back with some objections and stuff. Realize you don't necessarily need to make the sale on the phone. Mm -hmm. There are times I let people walk away from a call. They go, you know, that's a little steep. And I'm like, hey, you know what? No problem. When you come up with the money, have a great time, you know, otherwise just let me know how I could be helpful. There you go. And they walk away and they come back three, four days later, a month later, six months later, and they've got the money and they're ready to go. So a no isn't a no. It's a, it's a not right now. Right. And not then you didn't you pressure it. them. So that built even more rapport with them because they're like, oh, finally, somebody 
I got on a sales call with the person, but they didn't pressure me. Yeah. Or like, and, but you also set yourself in stone that you don't give deals. It doesn't matter what your financial situation is. That's not my business. This is what I'm worth. If you can't afford me, someone else out there will do it for less. They won't do as good a job. That is your choice, not mine, right? So I'm not going to discount myself ever, period. Boom. Yeah. And so like that, you send that message and that's a way stronger message than, oh, let me do this for you for what you can afford. Right. And then they just respect you even more. Yeah. So that's the worst case scenario is they say, no, you let them walk. Okay. Some people will come in with a maybe. Well, I do. I, you know, I want to, but I, I don't know. It seems a little steep for, and you just say, you know, this is what we do. We're really good at it. I can send you references if you'd like. I can, you know, like do this. Cause typically some people, they try to get you into like a trial period. Mm hmm type of situation by doing that you can say no i can send you to references of people who are very very satisfied with what we do there you go you know so which means like if you're just starting out and you have no references do one piece of work for free two maybe just so you can get people who are willing to hype you up but then stop okay start (laughs) right away right away so you know they, they might come up with objections i have to talk to my wife or husband um i don't know i just don't see an roi from this i don't blah 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 and that's where you make sure you answer the questions cuz usually objections have some underlying questions so make sure you explain those questions not being pushy yeah yeah but like, just say okay i'm here to help i'm here to answer anything i'm here to clarify anything that you need me to clarify etc yeah. And if you're selling a done for you service, you can coach over the phone a little bit and educate. Well, see, the reason why SEO is so important, the reason why we charge so much is these factors, you know, Mm -hmm. like you can break it down for them so they understand the value of what you do. If you're a coach, don't coach. Don't coach on your discovery calls. That's, you give them no reason to come back. Okay. Right. Let them say what they need to say. And then you go, yeah, I can definitely help with that. Here's my rate. Mm -hmm. Okay. You can lay out how you can help them like with accountability. And repeat back what they say, the terms that they use in the way that they use them. So usually when we get to an objection, it comes straight down to price. And since we don't discount there, it's easy because people can tangibly see what we do, Mm -hmm. you know, but for the people who are not as tangible, it's all results based, right? So you tell them where they're going to be and then you point them in the direction of people who accomplished that to validate you. Right. So we've got shows that make money on their shows. So if someone wants to monetize and that's their selling factor, I'm going to send them to those people we've succeeded with. Mm -hmm. Some people want supreme sound quality. What's important to you? Sound quality here. I'm going to send you to some, you know, some of our references who are satisfied with what we do. I'm going to send them to the people who are so amped up on sound quality. Right. Yeah. But we, we've produced like a lot of shows so far. So like we have a backlog of happy people that we can refer to, but if you're just starting out, just make sure you've got some happy people to refer to because those will curb your objections. You let these people go because there's no amount of convincing you can do. You can build trust, but the easiest way to build trust is let someone else pump your tires for you. That's like instant trust with that social proof. So if people, let's say people are like, oh, well, how do you use a podcast in your sales funnel or your marketing funnel? I'd be like, you know what? Why don't you talk to Ariel about that? Mm -hmm. And so they'll come and be like, well, has Scott helped you, you know, use your podcast for marketing? And Ariel can go on a huge rave review about me (laughs) because that's literally what we're doing right now. Right, right. And then that person comes back to me going, yeah, no, Ariel was stoked about you. I'm in. Instead of and me, that's how I always am. Like, oh, you know, I'm like at all the time. Oh my gosh, hands down, Scott. The sales call that you had the other day, I was mm-hmm. like, hands down, Scott Doucette and Podcast Bay Productions, just hands down. <laughs> and yeah. the person reached out to you for your services. And like, if someone wanted to talk to me and be like, well, how does Ariel, you know, help with personal branding? And I'll be like, are you kidding me? Like, Ariel creates more than a brand. Like, a brand is how you look, but Ariel creates how your fans feel about you. You know, Ariel goes that step deeper to create a connection with you and the people who love you and want to support you and hold you up and buy your stuff. Right. And so like by me saying that to someone, I have now sold you for you. And when they come back, they'll have a way better idea than Ariel trying to be like, well, I do this and I do this and I do this and I do this because it sounds conceited, right? right? Having someone else say it as a happy customer 
is just plain like they're taking someone else's word for it and then they come back so if you can with objections if you can refer them to a reference of some kind that would be cool you know some stuff you can answer in your own play by ear but if they're really like they don't seem sure give them references references testimonials yeah all that stuff and if you don't have like a portfolio yet get them in touch with people who know your character and the type of person you are because that really really matters as well Absolutely. And then once they give you like, because I've signed some really high level contracts, you know, well, high level for where we are right now, because of references. Mm -hmm. Who do you currently produce for? Send me the links to these shows. Do you have anyone I can call and talk to about the kind of professional you are? You're damn right I do. Mouth advertising is Mm -hmm. huge and one of the best because it's instant proof. So the, the bigger a trail of happy people you leave in your wake, which means always show up and always do an amazing job, hint, hint, wink, wink, nudge, nudge, don't rip people off, don't, oh. don't under-deliver, the more satisfied, happy people you are, the more expansive the word of mouth gets and the more you can actually choose who your references will be for what scenario, right? Mm-hmm. And, it kind of and the easier your job is, the easier the sale. Well, yeah, it sets the deck up in your favor a little better the more happy people you have. <laughs> so like you end up with a whole host of cheerleaders out there whispering to their friends have you heard about so-and-so have you heard about so-and-so you know this person does this they did this for me it looks great here you should hire them too like that that happens that's how we get all of our business for the most part at podcast bay it's happy customers so like if they are on the verge of rejecting you but they're still kind of interested give them the opportunity to speak to some references okay the other scenario is they might say yes. So by you putting your price out there and saying nothing, they could be like, yeah, absolutely. That's great. Based on everything you told me you do and what I'm going to see at the end of this, yeah, I'm in. I've had people literally look at me and go, that's it? <laughs> and I was so scared to say it. I remember when we first bumped our prices up to 500, like we're above that now. But like when we yeah. first bumped our prices up to 500, like I was so scared to say 500. And like, as soon as I said it, you know, that like hard throat swallow that like hurts mm-hmm. all the way down. I did that beforehand and you could actually hear like the. <laughs> and in my head, as soon as I did that, I went, she definitely heard that. And then I said $500 and she went, what? <laughs> you mean I can get everything that you do for less than 400 British pounds a month. And I was like, uh, 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 700? Like, <laughs> did I say five? I meant seven. Yeah. Uh, no, but I was like, yeah, that's, a, that's absolutely what you can get it for. Because I just raised my prices to that. And I felt comfy there. And I had just gotten like the easiest yes I'd ever gotten in my life. So but every- you know what? We all go through that, that, oh God, I'm, I'm about to say the price and I'm so scared. And that's why I said being silent is one of the hardest things because you're trying to justify, you're trying to, you, I mean, you're working to get that client. So it's like, I can't be silent. It's when, like you said, first. they may be calculating how they can get you the money. They may be calculating their budget in their head or on a piece of paper or Or they whatever. might laugh at you <laughs> hey, <laughs> because it's cheap. It's you know? all a part. Yeah, it's all a part of the process and we all go through it. But it does get easier. Like after you get confidence in the new price and you've said it once or twice and people have bit, you can handle an objection without thinking it's something wrong with your price. You just know it's something wrong with that person's situation right now. Mm-hmm. And don't treat a no like it's a bad thing. Like don't get mad at the pr- I've seen people get mad at no's. I've seen people be like, you know, I don't want to talk to you anymore. Or like you really need this and you're making a dumb decision. Like don't do that. Right. Because like I said, a, a lady who just hired us last spoke to me a year ago about our services and it was a no then because she wanted to take care of it herself and it seems like it usually takes about a year to two years to warm people up that's what i've been noticing people i work with i ask them how did they find me and how long did they stalk me and it's usually a year year and a half to two years for some people i mean some people have like really quick boiling points <laughs> like some people mm-hmm. i could literally get them at lukewarm i have a hard time converting a cold audience yet that's the next step but like if you're lukewarm i can still get you just because like i can build trust in a hurry because i know what people are afraid of with podcasting 
so I can get right to the bottom if you won't have to worry about this, you won't have to worry about this, we'll take care of that. And you can see them getting more and more comfortable as if they're like in a massage chair. And then all you have to do is <laughs> let them, release them and let them do it for a couple of days for the, by themselves or for themselves. And then they really realize yeah. how valuable your services are. It's like, I don't so, feel like doing all of this. So what this lady went and did is she went and, and like no judgment. This is not a bad thing at all. I'm not like this, no ill will. Okay. So she said she wanted to get a handle of it herself so that if she ever had to step in, she would feel comfortable to do so. Now I could have been pompous and said, you'll never need to step in or that great. That wouldn't have made her feel comfortable. That would have made me a banana head. Okay. Or I could have been like, oh yeah, no, no, you're going to see how much work it is. You, you, you know, you go ahead and do that, but it's going to be a lot of work and you're going to hate it no again not helpful right so I just said yeah no problem I understand like I run a team and if I didn't understand what they did I'd be pretty upset if things went wrong mm -hmm. so she left she hired someone else to do little tasks that we could have handled for her but you know they she got it done she launched her show when she launched her show rather than be like oh you did that like you know offhanded or whatever or yeah we could have made it sound so much better or you know like dumb shit like that which don't even enter my head, but I see other salespeople do it. Mm -hmm. I applauded her for it. Hey, you got it launched. Good job. I'm going to check it out. And I listened to the first episode and I told her it was great. Were there things I could have fixed? Yeah. Would my producers have done a nicer job? You know what? She's an editing beginner. So mm -hmm. obviously, like my people are pros, but I told her like, wow, nice job. Did you hire an editor? Or did you end up doing it yourself? I did it myself you know what? It sounds pretty good. You know, so like, then, like I said, she can appreciate what you and your team does. That's because, true. Like, I know how to edit, but oh my gosh, no, I'm, I just, I'm, I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. It's too tedious for me. Yeah. But like, I didn't insult her editing skills by saying, cause like literally you could have insulted her like, you know, and that's money. And so, and that's a person with feelings and that's, like there's issues there that like, I, I hate it when I see people getting rejected turn negative, right? Mm -hmm. And so like by complimenting her and all that stuff, a year later, she comes back through, hey, I finally have an understanding. The person I hired may not have done the best job ever. I might need some help straightening some things out. Do you mind? You know, I'm, I'm excited. I really want to work with you now. I know that I've gotten it as good as I can get it. I need mm -hmm. help now full price. Bam. A year yeah. later. And that's how you got me because I was piecemealing it around. Mm -hmm. So I had someone do my intro and outro. Um, I had somebody else do my cover art. And then when it came down to editing, the person was like, okay, I need you to go through and tell me each um and ah and all this you want me to take out. And I'm thinking by the time I go and listen to it and write all this down, I might as well edit it my damn self. Right. And then when I talked to you, just out of happenstance, you were like, yeah, you just send it and intuitively edit it. And I was like, oh my gosh, here. And oh, and you also did the show notes because I was going to have someone else do the show notes. And I was like, so you do all of that? That's literally <laughs> what yeah. I said. I said, wait a minute. How much is it? And I said, wait a minute. You do all of that? Okay, let me... <laughs> Let me back it up. Let me make sure I'm understanding this. So I just talk and just send you the file and you figure out what to edit and stuff. Yeah. And you do the show notes so I don't have to go back and listen and type anything. Yeah. And you do all this other stuff that I don't know anything about. Yep. All right. We're starting the podcast in January. <laughs> right? Like, that's what I mean. Like you, I was able to give so much value. And if you weren't sure, my first client ever was sitting there happy as a clam. And I could have just went, well, Ari, you know what? I'm not going to sit here and tell you how great we are. But if you want to talk to this gentleman, we produce for him and he can tell you all about the experience and give you like a customer's point of view. Yeah. But you know, for me, it was really like, the trying to piece it together and then coming to you and you were like a one-stop shop. That is really what got me immediately. Well, yeah. And th that's what I mean. Like you never know who's kind of watching, sizing up your business, trying to figure out what kind of person you are, trying to figure out if they're going to buy from you or not. But when you get on that call, ask people what they need. Tell them how you do what you do. Tell them what it costs. 
And if it's valuable enough and they see the value in it, they'll pay. And if they don't want to pay, it's not you. It's them. Because mm-hmm. you never know somebody's situation. And don't assume they're broke either. That's the other thing people do. They assume people are broke and they discount and they try to do favors and don't assume that. First of all, no one wants to feel like charity ever. Second of all, you never know. They might be in a situation where they've got money. They're just being careful because they got burned before. They might be in a situation where they're, they're going to come up with the money and they know they can. They might be literally seconds away from putting you on, like paying your full retainer. The second you treat someone like they're broke or think in your head that they're broke, you're going you're gonna to screw yourself out of every opportunity to treat that person fairly. Right. Because you bring in that energy. Right. Like, so don't walk into a sales call and like, because for all intents and purposes, like when I get into a sales call for things I want, I don't show up in a tux. I look broke. <laughs> <You know? laughs> I'm wearing a hoodie. I'm wearing like, you know, slip on <laughs> shoes. I'm not shaved. I haven't had a haircut in a month. And I'm going to a, a mastermind that costs seven, you know, 7.500, well, $7.5,000, you know, mm. 7,500. That's, that's the mastermind cost. And I show up for that thing looking like I do <laughs> with the money in my pocket of that old hoodie. Yeah. I'm the same you Imagine way. if that host went, no, you know, man, don't worry about it. I'll give it to you for, for three. You look, you know, I'll give it to you for half. You look like you could use a break. And then you feel offended. No, I'd whip out the seven and a half right away and count out half of it in front of them oh. <laughs> to teach them a lesson because you don't do that. Right? Like, I would literally just be like, yeah, I had 7.5, but here's 325, I guess. Like, you know, 375 here, here. That, that's cool. I don't mind. But like the second you discount someone, you take away their ability to pay you full price. You make that choice. So I see all these people being out there being like, oh, I, I hate discounting. Don't decide not to. Other people will just have to deal. <laughs> yeah. You know, I'm not saying never ever work for free or for less again. If there's a project with perks that far outweigh the the dollar, like if you're going to get a week stay in Vegas, all expenses paid, blah, 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 blah. And and it's go for it. Yes. Fine. Go live your life. Have fun. You know, but if it's literally just someone sitting on the other end of the phone trying to give you a sob story or, you know, maybe they have, they don't trust you yet, or maybe it's that, you know, like for no matter where the intent is coming from, you never, ever have to discount ever, period. Mm-hmm. Even if it feels like the right thing to do, even if it feels the good thing to do, a lot of the times it's not. And I've fallen in that trap so many times because that was my way of helping someone. But people just learned they mm. didn't have to pay you. Yeah. Yeah. So like stick to your pricing and then at the end of it, send them a PayPal invoice or, you know, like I like to get their credit card info right there on the call and put them into Stripe right away. Like before we were even hung up, I'm like, all right, let me get your email address. We'll tap in your card numbers and we'll have you invoice before we even hang up. How does that sound? Mm-hmm. That sounds great. Really efficient. Yeah. Just let me go get my card. So do you have your user good at breaking things down into steps. So do you have any takeaway steps or actionable steps for sales calls? Yeah. First off, if you qualified properly, you're going to have a much better conversion rate. So if they're coming to you with already an idea, if your marketing funnel did its job, you'll have an easier time. But the steps go as follows. If they don't make it to the end and buy, you need to fix your marketing funnel. Okay. That's my caveat. It's not your sales funnel that's screwing up. If you can get them all the way to the price and you say your price and they're like, oh, I can't afford it. Your marketing funnel is the problem. So you get on the call. (laughs) So (laughs) yeah, you get on the sales call, say your hellos, how are yous, show up on time for starters. Okay. Oh my goodness. Say your hellos, your how are yous, how you doings, you know, talk a little bit, smile, laugh, do what you do at the beginning of calls and then ask them. So, you know, what do you need from me? What do you need me to do? ask a question. How can I help you? How can, what can my team do for you? And then shut up and listen, shut up and listen, and then explain to them, Hey, yeah, I can help you with that. Or I can't be honest. If you can't, I can't, but I know someone who can let me hook you two up and then ask that person for a referral fee. (laughs) <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. there's that. Or, you know, listen and be like, okay, yeah, no, we can help you with these elements or we can help you with all of this, whatever it happens to be. Here's how we'll do it. You explain, you throw in benefits 
and transformation in the sales call. So we'll help you clean up your, in my case, we'll help you clean up your sound quality so that you don't lose listeners. People want to mm -hmm. stay because it sounds good. And in my case, it would be, I help you create brand consistency so that you look professional and it increases your visibility. And people, yeah, and people will remember you and, and it, it burns into their mind. They associate you more like, a, you know, you can create that kind of story where your, your brand consistency will be across all platforms. No matter where you are, you look like you. Mm -hmm. You're way more recognizable. Right. Right. That kind of thing. So you give them those transformations and what it'll do for their business and it, don't fluff it up. Don't lie. Like you, you don't need to overblow it, but just tell them what they'll experience as a result of working with you and then say, does that sound good to you? Mm -hmm. Let them ask, how much is this? Don't rush in, right. let them ask. Because then they'll be like, yeah, that sounds good. I have more questions about, so you can go a little more in depth. And then they'll be like, so how much does this cost? They always inevitably get to, so how much does all this cost? Or what is this worth? Or no matter how they word it, they always come to cost. Mm-hmm. And you say, yeah, for all of this, because it is a lot, you know, for all of this, we charge blank per month or blank one time or blank, whatever it happens to be. Does that sound good? And then shut up. Be quiet. Absolutely. They'll tell you if it sounds good or not. Let the answer be the answer. They mm -hmm. tell you to push really hard. Don't. You don't have to. Okay. You don't have to give them three objections. You know, fuck off. Okay. <laughs> if they say, no, it's too much money. Say ah, I get it. You know, it's not in your marketing budget right now. When it is, please reach out to me. I'd love to work on your show or I'd love to work with your brand or I'd love to be your VA or whatever it happens to be. Mm -hmm. Let them leave feeling good. You know, don't let them leave feeling like a broke failure. When you get the money, I would love to be part of that team. Mm -hmm. And then they'll come back to you. Yeah. Because they don't remember what you said. They remember how you make them feel. Exactly. Right. And so if they have objections and stuff, you can go back and forth and, you know, offer references, or if they say yes, send them to a payment processor. Done. Mm -hmm. Done. Start to finish. Like, Amazing. Thank you for sharing that process with us. No problem. I've, I've done it this morning and it worked. I've got two more to do and I'm excited. But again, like don't beat yourself up if people are coming to you and not getting through the whole funnel and not getting sales. Like don't take out your aggression on yourself or your clients, take it out on your marketing funnel. All right. <laughs> with that, wrap it up, Scott. Yeah. So if you want more help with salesy stuff, we're not experts, but you know what? We're learning to be, and we're getting a lot of success these days and it's a lot of fun. So if you want to tag along and see what we're doing and see what's working and what's not, you can get all of that in the Trep Tech Academy. And you can check out the link for that in the show notes. I've been Scott. She's been Ariel. Thank you so much and have a good week. Love ya. Thank you for tuning in to the Trep Tech Podcast. But if you like what you heard, go on to Apple Podcast and bring her a five-star review. And also, if you want to check out her service while she transforms mindsets, navigating entrepreneurship, leveraging technology, building relationships while bridging the gap in your business, check out treptechacademy.com. That's treptechacademy.com.